Those who are familiar with the lawless era of the Wild West will recognize the name Frank Stilwell as one that instills fear in their hearts. Because of his unbreakable will and brutal disposition, he became known as the most ruthless bandit to ever prowl the borderlands. He was renowned for his notoriety. Just the mention of his name was enough to send shivers down the spines of upstanding residents, and he left a wake of bloodshed and fear in his wake. But who precisely was Frank Stilwell, and what in his upbringing led to the callousness that he displayed throughout his life? In addition, the question arises as to how he was able to elude justice for such a protracted length of time. We will go into the life and crimes of Frank Stilwell in this in-depth exploration, uncovering the dark depths of a man whose name will long be synonymous with cruelty and lawlessness. Early years and formative experiences. Frank C. Stilwell was born in Iowa in 1856 to parents William Henry Stilwell and Charlotte B. Sarah Winfrey. His paternal grandfather was also named William Henry Stilwell. His family moved to the Kansas Territory and established a new home close to Palmyra, which was located along the Santa Fe Trail. During his formative years, Frank was exposed to first-hand accounts of the progression of the frontier and the intensification of tensions between early settlers and indigenous peoples. A time of turmoil in Frank's young life was marked by the dissolution of his parents' marriage and his father's passing while serving in the Civil War. Simpson Comanche Jack Stilwell, Frank's brother, had a huge impact on Frank's life and helped shape his route. Frank was profoundly influenced by Simpson's character and ideals due to the fact that Simpson was a Native American warrior, scout, deputy marshal, police judge, and United States commissioner. The sensitive mind of Frank was forever changed by his steadfast commitment to justice and opposition to illegal actions. In the year 1877, the brothers set out on an adventure, first traveling to Anadarko, which was located in the Indian Territory, and then continuing on to Prescott, which was located in the Arizona Territory. During a violent argument in Prescott, Frank committed his first act of violence, the murder of Chef Jesus Vega. This event marked the beginning of Frank's downward spiral into violence. This event in Prescott served as a turning point, changing the trajectory of Frank's life and putting him on a path that was riddled with lawlessness and violence. Simpson played a crucial role in molding Frank's choices and actions. Frank's downward spiral into criminality starkly contrasts with Simpson's unwavering dedication to ensuring that justice is served. Escalation of Criminal Activities As a result of the incident that took place in Prescott, Frank was cleared of the charges against him on the grounds that he was acting in self-defense. Following his departure from Miller's Ranch, he started working as a companion for C.H. Hamblin. On the other hand, things quickly became dangerous when Frank became involved in mining enterprises in Mojave County. In 1879, he and his partner James Cassidy were accused of killing Colonel John Van Houten, a mining rival with whom they had been in a fight. The conflict centered on a disagreement about mining rights. Frank and Cassidy were able to avoid indictment despite the allegations because there was insufficient evidence against them. Frank Stilwell was a consummate con artist who regularly assumed new identities and fabricated details about himself. He was a master of deception. In 1881, he was accused of engaging in the robbery of the Sandy Bob Line, but once again, due to insufficient proof, he and his collaborator Pete Spence were able to avoid prosecution and get away with their crime. In spite of this, a significant number of historians are of the firm opinion that Frank Stilwell was, in fact, engaged in the infamous theft, the Earp family and the Cowboys. As time passed, the level of friction between the Earps and the Cowboys only grew. In his capacity as a deputy marshal, Virgil Earp reported Stilwell and his accomplice, Pete Spence, to the federal authorities for interfering with postal delivery. It was believed that Stilwell was implicated in the murder of Morgan Earp, which contributed to the tension that already existed between the two groups. In order to protect his family from the growing number of dangers they faced, Wyatt Earp organized a posse of deputy sheriffs that included the notorious Doc Holliday. In Tucson, the Earps approached Stilwell and Ike Clanton, which led to a confrontation that resulted in Stilwell's death. The Earps were responsible for Stilwell's death. The assassination of Stilwell was a key turning point in the ongoing animosity between the Earps and the Cowboys. 
despite the fact that there were various stories of the exact circumstances surrounding the killing of Stillwell. The events that transpired after Stillwell's death only served to ratchet up the tensions that existed between the two groups. In their quest for vengeance for their fallen colleagues, the Cowboys continued to be a danger to the Earps and their allies. After realizing that the court system could not deliver justice, Wyatt Earp decided to take matters into his own hands to protect his family and exact revenge for the deaths of those they had lost. The epic gunfight at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona, was where the battle between the Earps and the Cowboys finally came to a head. The Earp brothers' reputation as lawmen eager to confront and bring down the criminals that terrorized the region was cemented due to the firefight that included Doc Holliday, the Cowboys, and the Earp brothers. The events that took place in the days leading up to the gunfight at the OK Corral contributed significantly to the development of the Western mythos and the lore surrounding people such as Wyatt Earp. The Earp family's dogged pursuit of justice and willingness to face off against the Cowboys were illustrative examples of the era's pervasive lack of regard for the law. The fight between the Earps and the Cowboys symbolized a struggle between those who attempted to enforce the law and others who relished in lawlessness, despite the fact that the conflict was complicated and the lines between right and wrong were sometimes blurry. Evading justice and end of a life. After Stillwell's passing, a number of different narratives surfaced describing the circumstances and reasons that led to his death. In spite of this, his funeral, which took place after he was accused of being involved in the murder of Morgan Earp, was a solemn occasion. The absence of an escort during Stillwell's burial reflects the solitary and miserable end to the life of a man who had led a life filled with a high level of violence and criminal activity. Stillwell's remains were transferred from the old city of Tucson Cemetery to a mass grave located in Evergreen Cemetery in Tucson at some point after their first interment there. The way in which he was laid to rest is another reflection of the ominous legacy he left behind. It serves as a reminder of the harsh and barbaric features that were prevalent throughout the time of the Wild West. The narrative of Frank Stillwell exemplifies the anarchy and bloodshed that were typical of the Wild West. He was a man whose callous demeanor and utter indifference to the value of human life made him a dangerous adversary. The fact that he was able to elude justice for such a considerable amount of time is indicative of the difficulties that law enforcement officials encountered in the Wild Frontier era. The name Frank Stillwell is still synonymous with fear, and his legacy has left an imprint that will not be erased from the annals of Wild West history. We have gotten insight into the factors that created his character and the deeds that defined his existence as a result of conducting an in-depth investigation into his life and crimes. The legacy of Frank Stillwell is a chilling reminder of the darker side of an era that continues to capture our collective imagination. This is a legacy that serves as a reminder of the darker side of an era. That's all for today. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. See you next time.